Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are doing another subscriber roast. These are the videos where you all send me your lovely spaces and I provide some feedback, some general advice, direction, whatever, to sort of help guide you in your decision-making process and your design journey. This is a roast, but it's honestly quite kind, I think, because I'm trying to help and encourage, not necessarily trash people's homes here on the internet. You know, because these are people's real homes. They submit them, which you can too, by the way, roast my space at nicklewis.ca and they submit them to me and then I go take a look and then I sort of kind of go through them together and I give some pointers and maybe you could learn something from those pointers as well. And this is part three in the series by the way so if you like this you know I got a couple more already here which I will link to at the end of this video so let's get to it. Okay first of all here so we have a Ryan from all the way from St. John's, Newfoundland, another Canadian. Hello, Ryan. And Ryan has brought us this space, which is, can I just say, Ryan is not shy about color, which is kind of awesome because, you know, we love all the design directions that everybody's going. But I have said before in these videos that everybody always chooses white paint for their walls. And I get it, it's safe, it's easy, it's like white goes with everything, kind of. But like, I get the direction. I get why everybody's a little bit afraid to, you know, paint something a little bit more crazy than white. Ryan is not. Ryan is not afraid. And I'm gonna show you some images and you're gonna take a look at the whole place. So Ryan defines his style as mid-century in drag, which I think is a hilarious description and quite apt actually for what he's got going on here because he definitely loves some mid-century pieces. You know, a lot of his furniture is mid-century in style, but the drag part is all the dressing going on around it and the colorful cacophony that he has everywhere in every room. And I say that in the nicest possible way because I really do love what he's done here. Let's go room by room, okay? So first of all, we've got this purple room here. Here. I love that he has gone for different colors in different rooms. I think that's even more bold and adventurous. So here's the thing I will say. I feel like I know you, Ryan. I feel like for you to have gone to Benjamin Moore or wherever and you go and you buy these paints and then come home and this is what you paint all of your different rooms, I get the impression you're a maximalist. I get the impression you're a person clearly who loves color, but I think that you really want to emphasize the drag part of your space and really have fun with really bold color. And so I think with all of these photos, I think you're holding back. I would love to see more personality, more pattern, more color. Well, when I say color, I mean besides the walls, um, in these spaces. Because again, this isn't about finding my style and putting you know, my style and copy pasting, because clearly I don't have purple and red walls here. It's not about necessarily you know, superimposing my style onto yours. It's about trying to understand your style and see what we can sort of tweak and evolve. And I think, you know, there's so much room here to play with a little bit more pattern and really fill the space with things that you really love. Some of those art pieces are a little small for me. I would love to see them to be a little bit more of a larger format, but again, you know, you're having fun and putting art on your wall and that's great. I would love to see even more art. You've got the cat trees, which, you know, the cat people in the comment section tell me there's a necessary evil. I've never owned a cat myself. I'm always kind of more of a dog person, but they're necessary. Yeah, I mean, you've got really bright, bold rooms. You know, there's some details here that you've got that I think are really interesting. First of all, you've got the orange and green in the pillows, which clearly is drawing on the color of the paint on the walls, which I love, as well as the orange in this, you know, even style chairs that you've got, as well as the orange on the cabinets. And again, for someone to paint their kitchen cabinets bright orange, I feel like I know you, Ryan, and I feel like you are you need to lean in a little bit more because I think that there is so much more room for you to play with even more bold pattern and texture and maybe even color in some of your accessories in these spaces. So, you know, I'm not always the biggest fan of putting a rug under a dining room table, but perhaps for you it makes sense here because I just want to see more opportunities for you to play with color, pattern, and texture in your space. So that might be something really worthwhile considering. You've got lots of plants. Could you go even harder? Perhaps. You know, now I'm looking here at the living room where you've got these green walls, which again are not sage green. This is not October Miss Benjamin Moore's color of the year. This is green green, right? Like he went all in on this green and he really is having fun with it. But I would say, 
there's room to play with a little bit more. Also, I will say in a lot of these rooms, I feel like your lighting might need a little bit of an upgrade. I feel like you can have fun with some metallics a little bit more. Uh, some of these are just looking kind of a little, maybe a little smidge basic, and I feel like you could upgrade. I'm gonna give you some suggestions here of some really sort of interesting lighting that I think is going to work. And again, I do think metallics has a place in your whole design here. Uh, you know, again, include that as kind of an accessory to some of the colors that I think you could honestly have a little bit more fun with. Love to see a pattern rug on the floor as well, preferably something in a little bit of a brighter color. I feel like you'd really love Jonathan Adler. I don't know if you know Jonathan, he is a designer. He's got lots of really interesting collaborations with different brands, one of which, by the way, is with Ruggable. Um, I'm gonna link to some in the description for anything, by the way. Some of the rugs that he's done in collaboration with Ruggable could really work for you because he loves to play with pattern and he loves to play with color. And I think he is more of your style and I think you could really have fun with some of these uh, accessories and uh, rugs that I think that he has available right now. So one of the things that you are considering is putting wallpaper in your home. Specifically, I think you mentioned the hallway. Absolutely. I think that, you know, you are the type of person that with your style that you have going on in this home, where you're clearly having fun with color, so much room for you to play with wallpaper. And I wouldn't go for really sort of subtle, subdued, you know, uh, you know, this isn't the place for a grass cloth. This is a place for you to go for something really bold, really fun, maybe something in a polka dot, something in a stripe, maybe something tropical, something botanical, something that's really bold and sort of interesting. And again, plays with that color because I think it would really, really work for you. Now, if you are thinking of changing your style somewhat and you're thinking, you know, you want to incorporate a style with a little bit more subtlety, which I don't think you do and I don't think you should go for, but if you are, obviously there's lots of room for you to play with some of those more desaturated colors in the paint. That is obviously going to open yourself up to a lot of different options that are a little bit more subtle in nature and a little bit more of what, you know, would probably be more of my style. But this isn't my style, this is your style, but I would just like for you to have a little bit more fun. If it means giving you permission, I don't know, but you know, really play up the fun that you're having with this space. It's really cool. And I think you can have a lot more fun with it. Okay, so next up here, we have Shauna. Shauna has sent me her kitchen. Now she says that she is a renter and she has she feels like she's kind of exhausted a lot of her options here. She's really struggling with what she's going to do to make the space feel a little bit more cohesive and tie it all together because she's really struggling with some of these fixed elements that are clearly quite dated and she doesn't know, you know, what to do to make the space kind of uniquely hers. So let's dive into that kitchen here. First thing, let's talk about the flooring. So, I mean, you can't do anything really about the flooring. It, it's hard to really tell. I do think that's probably like a vinyl rolled Linoleum is different than vinyl, but I'm just going to call it like linoleum. It's that sort of, you know, sheet, sheet vinyl that you buy at a roll and then throw down. That's sort of what I get the impression that that is. I don't know if you really have a whole ton of options to cover that. And to be honest, I don't mind it. Would I recommend someone put in rolled vinyl or linoleum or anything um, into their kitchen here in 2022? No, because I think there are better options in luxury vinyl plank. You can do tile, you can do lots of different things. I personally wouldn't recommend the sheet vinyl thingy. I think that's probably what you're dealing with here. But the little terrazzo print is kind of fun. And um, I kind of don't really dislike that. You know, in photos, it presents reasonably well. Now, the thing is, is there's a lot of pattern, a lot of contrast there. So it does draw the eye down, but you do have some pieces that are kind of drawing the eye a little bit around the room. So I don't think that's necessarily a problem. I do quite like it. It looks like you've maybe tried to pull the color from the flooring into the wall. Um, I think that that wall color, again, you know, this is maybe people chose colors other than white, which I always appreciate. I think it's kind of a nice sort of peachy sort of color. You know, if you wanted to uh, go with something a little bit more subtle, then, you know, that might work for you. Again, oh, I feel bad. Like, I'm like, don't choose white walls. And then I'm like, hey, you went for a color. So now I'm going to tell you to choose white walls. It's just my personal preference here. Maybe the peachy pinky just not necessarily where I would have wanted to go in this space. But if that's your color and you love it, then of course you just go have at it. But what I really do want to talk about here is this, you know, it's like a gallery piece, but it's this like multi-photo thing that you have on the wall. These are pieces where you usually buy these photo frames and they almost come in a gallery wall style, but they're sort of fit in. Here's the problem with that. They're like 
incredibly tight and close together, sort of by design, because that's how they make them, which is why I'm usually not the biggest fan of getting those. Uh, they they are they kind of create a gallery wall effect, but it's so tight and has no space that there's no sort of um, negative space around each photo to kind of let it breathe. It definitely feels like the photographs are way too tight and really ought to be spread a little bit more. So I don't love that piece, to be honest. Um, if you want to display your photos, I recommend getting different actual frames and then lay them out accordingly. I have a video on gallery walls if you really are committed to the gallery wall idea. So if you want to maybe, if you're interested in changing that out, but you kind of still want to keep that gallery wall effect, that might make sense is, you know, going with something, um, you know, it looks like you've got enough photos there to fill out that space, but just choosing frames that are going to be a little bit more spaced out so that you kind of have that negative space around each print. It's going to give it a little bit more breathing space and it won't look quite so tight. Then we come to sort of the hanging light fixture that you've got above. I'm not gonna lie to you, Shauna. It feels a bit sad to me. It feels a little like it's it's disappointed in itself. It looks like it's kind of got two battery packs that you stuck on the top of the door frame in order to, you know, all hold on to the lighting because you obviously didn't want to fix that into the space. I just think they're like a little, I think I just think they're a little sad. I think they're not happy there. I think they work at their best outdoors in an outdoor setting because it provides really dynamic lighting outdoors and like a garden or a patio and that can be really really cool it also feels a little like 14 year old girl to me to have sort of string lights in an interior space usually but i feel like this just it, it doesn't feel like it's um screaming sort of sophisticated beautiful kitchen to me and i would just love for those to maybe be repurposed in another area of the home Let's just go with that. Now, moving on to the kitchen cabinets here. Clearly have some fairly dated cabinets, which I can see here. Now she said, quote, uh, it is a rental with terrible 1970s cabinets. I tried sticking up white contact paper, but it only goes so far. Okay, so let's see how far you got. So not gonna lie, Shauna, it didn't look like you got very far. I will say those two that you did, which is I'm making the assumption that you did the two on the wall, that's what you mean. And then the rest you just kind of left. Keep going. I think those actually look kind of cool. The contact paper is doing a really good job of reducing the contrast that you're seeing from those cabinets. The emphasis on the cabinets is really dating. Not only is the walnut veneer kind of feeling a little bit dated at this point, um, but the contrast is really emphasizing and it's kind of drawing your eye into all sorts of different areas of the kitchen and I'm lost and confused. But what you've done with those two cabinets above, I think is a really effective job because by putting the white contact paper over top of the whole cabinet, you're reducing the contrast and thus creating a little bit more of a seamless integration of those cabinets into the space. The contrast is gonna draw your eye and that's what is unfortunately happening with the rest of those cabinets. So I would keep going and keep doing the contact paper look. It's hard for me to tell up close how really great they look, but if you're reasonably happy with the results of those two cabinets, I would keep doing and do all the rest of it. Now, the countertops. You've got the kind of little bit dated tile countertops. If there's a way for you to use some sort of contact paper to cover those up, that might make sense. The problem with the backsplash yeah, it doesn't really work with the cabinets. I mean, that's just the ring. Can, who's your landlord? Can you get them to call me? Because I have some questions. The cabinets plus the uh, countertops plus the backsplash. Oof, that color scheme. It's because you've got really sort of kind of chocolatey brown warm tones. And then right away, you've got really light sort of um, teal sort of cool colored blue backsplash and those two are really clashing for me. Again, because you're in a rental, I really do feel like covering them is probably going to be the best option. I'm going to link and show some here of some great options that you can combine that might make more sense. That's really what you're left here is I think you're going to see the most kind of bang for your buck with those fixed elements of just covering them up because you just don't have the ability to be able to take them out and renovate. That's just not the reality for you. I'm also going to add here a really amazing TikToker that I found. I really love her account. It's Imani at Home. She is a renter. She talks all about designing a beautiful space in a rental and I think she does a really great job of doing just fantastic things with contact paper and lots of different temporary DIY sort of solutions that are always renter friendly so definitely check her account out. But I will say where you're also not off the hook Shauna is clutter and uh, the need to eliminate some of the items that you have on your countertop. You know we love that you're looks like you're you got a Nutribullet on the counter we all love that you're into smoothies and that you're being healthy good for you girl we love that for you 
you and then a part of your journey, but I do think that it doesn't need to stay on the countertop every day because I don't think you're, you're drinking that many smoothies because who does? So let's put that in the cabinet when not in use, bring it out for when you need it, and let's tuck that away because I am seeing a lot of pieces sitting on the countertop that I do think might make sense to move away. Remember, things that we're displaying in our home are intentional, that that's the reality. Like it's either necessary, like you need it there all the time. So maybe, you know, it's obviously cumbersome to put the coffee machine maybe away every day. But things like the Nutribullet, we could probably put that away when not in use. Also the fridge, ooh, this is an area that is sometimes a bit of a challenge is, you know, I'm not gonna tell you, you know, you've clearly got a very talented small child who has clearly been painting you some lovely art and you are displaying it on your fridge and that is great. I think that, you know, being particular and careful with what you're putting on the fridge is probably a good idea because, you know, people tend to put a lot of stuff floating on that fridge and sometimes it just adds to the visual clutter to a space. So, you know, your realtor may have given you a notepad one year, you know, for Christmas and you decided, okay, let's use that and put it on my fridge. It's just contributing to the visual clutter in the space and therefore not needed. So I would just curate that a little bit. The kids' art can stay because clearly they're talented. Maybe take a look at some of those other pieces and let's just get rid of them or shove them in a drawer, never to be seen again. And that little wall unit, clearly you've got some extra storage needs. Again, this unit is open shelving and thus what that's going to do is add to the visual clutter to the space. So if you can find another space to store that stuff, that would be ideal. If not, I would maybe consider getting a unit that is going to have closed doors. So some of those pieces that maybe you're not super excited about showing off, you know, but you still need that storage, Drawers are a really great way to hide some of those pieces that we are going to need, but it's not something that necessarily we are choosing to display in our home every day. So I would say the things that you would benefit the most is decluttering and sort of storing some of those pieces that you don't really need to be displayed and also to maybe cover up some of those fixed elements that are looking a little dated, I will agree. Uh, this is Luke who sent me this from South Africa and we are gonna take a look at his space. Now he described this as an addition that was added on. I know in some countries, I feel like the UK, you guys do this a lot. South Africa, maybe I don't really know, but you tend to do a lot of additions and like kind of like, I don't know, it always kind of feels like the Weasleys home from Harry Potter where people just like add on all these different extra rooms all over the place. Not really as common, I think in North America, probably because the houses tend to be bigger. So we tend not to do additions, but that's what this one is. So he says he's got this addition that he sort of inherited and he doesn't really know what to do with it. First of all, he has, I will say, if you're wondering what this little thing is in the corner, he said that they call it a braai and that is a, it's like a multi-purpose entertainment room, but they have an indoor barbecue that is called a braai. B-R-A-A-I, I hope I pronounced that correctly, in South Africa. I have never really heard of this indoor barbecue, but it sounds really fun. So let's take a look at this room though, okay? Because this is an interesting room because you're still figuring out what its purpose is. Because I look at this and I've got a bar in the corner. I've got an indoor barbecue, because who knew that was a thing? Then you've got like a living room area. And then it's not obvious when you look at this, but he's got chairs up against a pool table. So that is actually a pool table that he has then covered up to put chairs around and have it as sort of, I guess, a makeshift table there. Or, you know, maybe he's just using it to protect the pool table when not in use. And he just added the chairs on for like extra seating and extra table space if needed. And it looks like, off kind of a little bit further away, there's an actual dining room with another sort of Ames inspired chair or an Ames chair over there, which are interesting. And he's got that over there, which looks like a really cool little room as well, but that's a dedicated dining room. So the pool table really just kind of looks like it's hanging out as extra sort of tabletop space. Okay, so let's talk about it. So I think the first thing you need to figure out, Luke, is what is this room for? What is the purpose of what you're doing here? On one hand, you can kind of get away that it's a multifunctional room, but I'm not really buying that because I think you've kind of got a little bit as a living room, but then it's also kind of a bar slash games room. Now I'm going to assume that because this was an addition that you have a living room probably somewhere else in the home. And this is sort of meant to be a little bit more of kind of a lounge games room. So my advice right away is to figure out the purpose of what this room is and then start working with your space plan. And I think that I'm going to make the assumption that this is going to move more towards being a games room. That's what I would like for this to be. You've got the bar there. You've got the outdoor patio area that's gonna bring you outside. You've got up indoor barbecue braai in the corner, which 
you know, that's fun. And then you've got a pool table. And you actually said in the email that you were like, I'm gonna get rid of the pool table. I would actually advise that you really lean in to this concept. Now again, I don't know you. I don't know what your hobbies are, but you've got a pool table, so you probably like pool. So why not lean in and have this as a really cool, almost like indoor outdoor entertainment space and really using that as kind of the use case for this. So I would say those sofas maybe aren't really working for you in that area. You might still wanna have a sofa and that's okay. Maybe the two might be a little bit too much. If we're going to be making this into a games room, it's really difficult for me here to start to advise sort of the space plan and what necessarily to choose. I don't really actually understand your style just based on the way that the room currently is right now and its current formation. What I would say is that a lot of the furniture pieces, except for kind of those Ames dining chairs, which are really just kind of the same ones that you used in the dining area, I would say a lot of these furniture pieces are not giving me a whole ton of personality. So let's start looking at different inspirational images of different bars and different styles that you actually really enjoy and then work from there. There's so much fun you can have with a games room and there's honestly, most people would kill to have this kind of like a den space with such an indoor outdoor area because it just gives such a great entertainment space and an area to have like so much fun in and get really creative and start to maybe like dress up some of these furniture pieces that you've chosen and make them a little bit more interesting a little bit more of a statement have a little bit more fun with your style again hard to say because i don't really know your style based on these photos but i'm going to give you some ideas because you know, some things like these bar stools, they're a bit of a snoozer, I'm gonna be honest. And I think you can do so much better with a fun bar. So many more interesting things you can do with furniture in this area, different accessories that you can do, having fun with displaying maybe your alcohol a little bit, which usually is kind of not always advisable to necessarily like overload your dining area with alcohol. I mean, what do I have? I maybe got a bottle of wine back there, but I wouldn't necessarily always go full on in a living room, but in a bar, all bets are off, right? Now you can start to have a little bit more fun, stop covering the pool table and really just like lean into it being a pool table. If you want to include some rugs, you know, have a little bit of fun there because right now the rug that you have chosen, in my opinion, is a little bit too small. None of the uh, sofa legs actually go on the rug, which is something that I always advise. But definitely, you know, you have a hard tiled surface, so it wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea to put a rug on there, but you can definitely have some fun, play with some art, play with some color. You don't have to stick to the white walls. Definitely the first step for you is going to be to clearly define the use case for what you want for this house. To me, this looks like a really fun sort of entertaining area and I would love for you to lean into that. Let me know when it's done because I want to come over and check out the bride. So that's it for me for today, you guys. I'm going to link here to my playlist to the other two um, Roasting Your Subscriber videos that I have done. So I will check you all in those videos. Thanks. Talk to you soon. Bye.